So I had the idea to do this this fake movie trailer. I wanted to do a um, a biopic trailer about someone who was still alive, <laughs> and to just make everything up, <laughs> like something you could clearly fact check. Um, and uh, and I thought I had the idea to do it about Weird Al, and we had a mutual friend in Patton Oswalt, and I had Patton reach out just to get Al's blessing because I thought maybe it was an idea that he wanted to do himself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, I don't want to steal something that eventually, it feels a bit like a very Weird Al kind of idea. And uh, Patton was like, can I share your email with him? And like 10 minutes later, I had an email from Weird Al who I'd never met. And uh, he was like, yeah, I, I know, I'm familiar with your stuff. I'd love this idea. I'd love to collaborate with you on it. And like oh that evening, I was getting coffee with him and Amazing. like watching trailers the, for, the, for the internet was a beautiful thing in 2009 yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just all peace and love and joy and, yeah. and <laughs> comedy celebrities just wanting to be in videos for free <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to those days yeah wow yeah so he was that was one of my questions so he was involved in the in the in the trailer yeah we just we we the two of us watched a bunch of biopic trailers um and sort of you know, if you think biopics in their entirety are, are a little bit formulaic, the trailers <laughs> even more so. <laughs> when we were putting the trailer together for this movie, uh, I was like, went back to sort of analyzing biopic trailers. And at, um, in a two minute, 30 second trailer, between one minute and 40 seconds and one minute and 55 seconds in every musical biopic trailer, when it says this summer or this fall or the actor's name, there's like a big tone shift where it like goes into the big ballad or something. Every single one of them, the same thing. Like all the, the emotional scenes at the, yeah, yeah. In, in the back, uh, the wow. back third. <laughs> so, but, so that was 12 years ago. And yeah. you've, you've obviously been doing a ton of great stuff since then, but what led you to want to go back and revisit Al? Um, it was Al that, um, he, you know, he really dug how the trailer came out and he started showing it at his, at his concerts. So for, for a decade, during a costume change in the middle of his show, um, this trailer would play. And after the show, he does meet and greets, and people would always come up to him and either say, um, oh, you have to make that movie, or I've looked for that movie, and I can't <laughs> find it. <laughs> and uh, then in, in, uh, in February of 2019, I got like an email from Al out of the blue that was just like, I mean, it explained that, and it said, um, you know, with Bohemian Rhapsody and Rocket Man's going to be coming out soon, and yeah. all of these biopics that have been announced, I feel like the time might be right to to turn this into a movie. Which at the time we were like, oh, it's it's a sketch, you know, it's a it's a little three minute thing, and um, yeah, <laughs> that's wow. that's that's. And I met him for coffee the next morning, and and Pablo Escobar came out of that. <laughs> First coffee. Seriously? Al had oh just binge-watched Narcos. <laughs> 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 and he was like, you know, I'd love for there to be a part of the movie where just randomly I'm like John Wick fighting uh, Pablo Escobar. And I was like, wow, all right. <laughs> sure, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. Let's make it work. Yeah, and then he really held on to that idea too, right? Because like a few times we were just like, are you, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And, and also like, can we afford this? Like the, the jungles of Columbia. He's just like, I'm not making the movie unless I'm in the jungles of Columbia. It's like, you're the boss, Al. Yeah, I said, I was like, you know, it's going to be the, that, that's going to be the first, because he, he was like, it needs to come out of the blue. And I'm like, okay, all right, but you know, someone has to pay for this movie <laughs> to get made, and I feel like that's the first thing they're gonna say, cut, <laughs> unless we like pack it full of payoffs and we like have the emotional like resolution to the movie, you know? It has to like, it has to show up and be random at first, but by the end of it, it's like, well, I guess Columbia had to happen. <laughs> like this Pablo Escobar scene had to happen, <laughs> and that's why we did the Madonna thing. I feel like yeah. the medallions were like invented for that scene and then planted yeah. earlier. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I have to say, like, just as a general, like, my reaction is the short is so funny, but it's it's a short, it's a sketch. And what's remarkable about this film is you, it's a feature length version of that 
and it totally works. Like you sustain it. It's engaging. It's interesting. Thank you. It's funny throughout, and it does have like emotional colors to it. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's not just an overextended sketch. So it's. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's sort of. I mean, that was like the toughest needle of thread. <laughs> you know, it was like kind of. Um, yeah, it all sort of like lands on the tone of it. And it was, yeah. you know, there's a lot of, there's jokes that ended up on the cutting room floor, like sillier gags that feel a little more like airplane or, or naked mm -hmm. gun. And <laughs> I heard a couple ahs. <laughs> I know we hated, we hated cutting them too. Um, I always say that if, you know, after this comes out on Roku, if there's a release, the Yankovic cut, um, <laughs> Hashtag campaign that starts. Maybe someday you will see there's like an additional 20 minutes of like jokes <laughs> that are gone out of oh this. Oh my God. Yeah, that are just like really moments that like break the tension or, you know, just sort of step on the tone we're going for. And, you know, once, once you sort of break that in a scene, you don't get it back. And suddenly you find yourself not caring about the character as much and then it just and then it starts to feel like an overlong sketch yeah 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 re really to eric's credit from the first video through the movie there were a few of those but like he's always had such a handle on what he wanted the comedy and the tone to be and the performances like we worked together at funnier die for uh, oh, probably three years or thereabouts and he always had great instincts when it came to casting also and, and how to blend comedians with dramatic actors in a way to kind of really get that balance and that emotion that you typically don't see in just like a straight parody. Uh, thank you, Mike. The, the, uh, uh, you want to talk about a couple of the wild swigs we took in the, for yeah. Weird Al, the first trailer? <laughs> yeah, so when I was looking at that email today, just in, in anticipation of this, the, the very first person that we asked and was subsequently passed on uh, to play Al in the trailer was Justin Timberlake. <laughs> which I had a great feeling about. Of course, I always had a great feeling about everyone. Um, and then there were a few more, though. I think you remember... Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did have the heart to tell you over email. I don't know if I ever made the offer oh, yeah, to Tom I know, Cruise. I know, I know, yeah. The, the, the email chain, I think, actually... Well, I don't know the exact order, but I know from the email, Sam Rockwell. Oh, wow, I forgot someone, about that. Uh, Edward Norton, I know that we Edward were. Edward Norton, nice. I knew his uh, wife, so I went through Sean Robertson to no avail. Yeah, by the way, if like you enjoyed any of the early Funny or Die videos, it's all like this guy <laughs> pulled in talent. Like, I, I, it's like unreal. Yeah, please, please give it up. Um, yeah, because I started working there like maybe a month before you yeah, did. Yeah, summer of 2008. Yeah, yeah, and it was like when I got there, you know, it was like, you want a celebrity in your video? pick up the phone and call an agency and be like, hi, can I speak to uh, <laughs> Sam Rockwell's agent, please? I'm from the website that Will Ferrell... Uh, so it, there's a video called The Landlord. Uh, <laughs> and then Mike came in and, like, everything changed there. And that's when, you know, that's when we started getting all the big, uh, big celebrity videos and everything. So speaking of talent, when did uh, Daniel Radcliffe get involved? Yeah, so... And, and when did you think of him as somebody for this part? Yeah, I mean, we just... We, we kind of put together a short list of actors that we, um, that we wanted to go out to. Uh, Radcliffe was, like, very early on that list and quickly rose to the top of it. Um, just being someone who's such a great dramatic actor, obviously he carried, like, an entire movie franchise for a decade as a child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, he's incredible. <laughs> um, and, uh, he, but... You know, his post Harry Potter work, he's such a great comedic actor, too, um, and makes some pretty bonkers choices. So all of that stuff yeah. together, we're like, I feel like this guy's going to get it. Um, and he's also going to be someone who's like not going to try to push the comedy and that like he's going to play it really grounded in this crazy universe that we've created and uh, and really lean into this this tone. Um, so yeah, we sent it to him, and I, I want to say like a week later, we were having a, a a Zoom with him. This is right before Zoom. This is right before the pandemic. Yeah. We were having a Google Hangout. I don't know <laughs> what we did back then, um, but uh, but he was like immediately in. Yeah, wow. he yeah, was like. Folks should like, know this me? is rarely how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you rarely have Weird Al Yankovic attached yeah. to the movie too. <laughs> but it, it wasn't set up. It was just totally a spec script. Yeah. And so to his credit, his team got it really quickly. He read it quickly. You guys had that Zoom, 
and basically he signed on from there. Yeah, then, by the end of that, by the end of that uh, that video chat, he was like, "So, uh, what? Tell me what kind of accordion to get. I want to start practicing accordion now." Um, wow. And and we got off and like me, Al and I called each other and we're like, "Did so? I mean, I think he, that's great, right? He's in. He wants to do it. Like, I'm like, yeah, I think he's, he wants to buy an accordion. Sure, yeah." It's, I mean, it's interesting because he is grounded, as you said, but he, like, for this to work, you need an actor who's going to fully commit and go everywhere the movie goes, which he does. Yeah. And in the short, Aaron Paul is the same kind of actor, right? Yes. He just will go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, like, the harder he commits to yeah. just playing this really silly moment super dramatically, like, yeah. the, just the, the better the comedy lands in it. So I do want to ask about Madonna. Um, yeah. Did, like, did you run this by her? Did she <laughs> consult? Does, uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, the, no. No. The, the last thing I would have pitched actually is like, I know Guy Siri. Let's get a Madonna's approval. Yeah. On this. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. just dreading the call. Madonna and, uh, has notes, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think Madonna is uh, is still <laughs> so focused on her own biopic. That's right. Which I think she co-wrote and is yeah, co-directing yeah, yeah. with I, Diablo Cody, which will be. I mean, maybe as bananas as our movie. <laughs> well, 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 once I, if it ever comes out, but no, we um, we worked hard to avoid that conversation. <laughs> do, you, has, do you know has she seen it? Is there any reaction? I mean, n no, I'm. Surprised. I think it's a great. Uh, she's amazing as Madonna, and the the, uh, the whole storyline is brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I think. Like, I, I've been a Madonna fan forever, and, you know, she showed up on Wayne's World and, you know, on SNL, like, yeah. in the 90s. I, I mean, I think she has a great sense of humor, um, hopefully about herself. <laughs> uh, but even if she doesn't, this is, you know, it's not, Evan's not playing Madonna. She's playing, like, an arch Bond villain in a Madonna costume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, she gives, she has, like, a little bit of Madonna in her personality, yeah. you know, um, but but it's very much like an original character she's creating. That yeah, it's like one she's of as much of Madonna as that as Dan is of Al. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of those great calls that you get from lawyers where you're just like, yeah, this is so far out there that no one could ever like basically have a grounds for a lawsuit because no no reasonable living human being would oh, ever good. like imagine that this is based on her actual life. Yeah, that's like, like we'll take it. That's yeah, it's that's almost great. like that's why we kill Al at the end of it. It's like just to <laughs> definitively say that none of this is true, without having to like put it in print. You know? Right, right. Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> um, and, and Olivia Wilde played Madonna. Yeah, in the trailer. Yeah, in the, yeah, in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. In, the, in the original. Yeah, yeah. So we've had great Madonnas. Well, you know, I go to every single musical biopic. They're all bad, and I see them all. Yes. And, um, uh, but th and you hit all the all the beats, right? It's, yeah. It's amazing, but um, th like this movie is a pack of lies. But I actually feel like I've seen a good biopic of Al Weird Al Yankovic. I feel like I, yeah. I'm like, yeah, this is like it's it's all made up. But this is him. Like I feel like the spirit of him is. I feel like I know him more. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of like the only way that you could do a Weird Al biopic is to do it this way. Like, yeah. this says more about him than maybe his real true story does, which is, you know, not dramatic enough to make an interesting movie, I don't think. Very supportive parents, I no drugs. I was ask about the parents. No yeah. alcohol, no cursing. <laughs> um, never curses. Has never, I think he said his wife has never heard him curse. I've never heard him say a swear word before. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, not not like drama, <laughs> dramatic <Yeah>. biopic <laughs> material, maybe. Um, can you talk about the the song that he did for the film? Oh, at the, at we'll the end. have a, a Academy campaign. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So so that song, um, you know, it kind of came from. I was talking about uh, Amish Paradise, like. Amish Paradise was always like the end song of the movie, and there was like a minute where where I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't necessarily know if Amish Paradise works after after like hearing the dad's story because the lyrics didn't really connect to the song. You know, it's like it's not the story of like the dad's experience right. being Amish. Um, so I I was pitching to Al that maybe he write a song that 
you know, movie Al performs, like a never before heard song that he performs at the award show. And uh, we ended up figuring out how to make Amish Paradise work with the notebook, or, you know, with like that the dad wrote the song Mm -hmm. and it falls out of the uh, sketchbook. And then a week later, Al was like, you know what, though? I've been thinking about this idea of writing a, you know, writing an original song. Because I, I, I pitched that the song, like, was just the ultimate biopic song about his journey. And he's, so Al was like, what if I write a song about how everything in the movie was true? And we just play it at the credits at the end. And I'm like, that's a better idea. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's where that sort of idea came from. And I'm Amazing. like, oh, my God, did I just, like inception a weird an original weird Al song <laughs> i'm like i can't believe that i sort of lit the spark that you know uh made this song happen yeah. there were like i've been an al fan for as long as i can remember there's so many moments i mean obviously i wrote a movie with him and we're like personal friends <laughs> but like there were so many pinch me moments like making this i got to go into the studio with like his band like he recorded all new versions of the songs for the movie and i got to like go in yeah with the band and like watch them play these songs and like you know Al sent me the mixes you know first he's like you're the first person in the world hearing these new mixes of my new songs and it was like an emotional moment for me yeah, it was really sure. crazy wow. yeah well the, the um I, I'd love to hear both of you talk about sort of what production was like I mean over like you're shooting during COVID on a very tight budget yeah. Uh, actually, I don't know what your budget was. I mean, a tight timeline. Yeah. Um, I, mean, Wait, Mike, I can confirm it was tight. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could figure out the budget by how many days we shot, probably. Um, but it, I mean, I was saying to Mike before, it looks like a big movie. I think it looks great. It looks like a big movie. Thank you. you. Have these, like, Thank you. Set pieces. Um, yeah. It was. Um, so, what was that experience like? And then, kind of drilling down on one component of it, like all the filming the music scenes and the performance scenes, if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, I mean, it was tough, 18 days. uh, We shot this movie in 18 days, for those who have not heard that. That is insane. Yeah. Um, That's like one Game of Thrones fight scene. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think that the the big fight at the diner, we shot in four hours. (laughs) Um, You know, we were rehe- we had rehearsal time. That's one luxury that we had in um, in pre production, which was only five weeks long too. Uh, but we had a couple of weeks to rehearse, and you know our actors were super dedicated. Um, you know Daniel especially, he took accordion lessons. Um, he he learned enough accordion to like you know, realistically fake play a hollowed out accordion in the movie so we wouldn't have to like waste time shooting around it and then getting insert shots of, you know, someone else's hands playing. Um, He learned uh, a bunch of dance choreography. That Like a Surgeon uh, performance that you saw is cut way down. There's like, (laughs) it's like twice as long. There's verses and there's like a big, dance you'll see it in the Yankovic cut (laughs) Uh, but there's like you know he had to learn like choreography um, and the guys in the band too like we cast actors that could play the real instruments they all learned how to play the songs you know we did band rehearsals so you know that that helped out Um, we shot all that concert stuff in one day um, you mean the big concert? The, the big the, concert, yeah. yeah, the big, wow. the Doors thing, Incredible. Eat It, and, and Like a Surgeon. Um, we shot that all in one day in Pasadena at the Performing Arts Center. We also shot the whole, like, breakup with the band, you know, down in the tunnel, the fight with the band with Drunk Al this, that same day. Uh, and it was, we did it in, like, less than 12 hours. <laughs> Yeah, um, unbelievable. Yeah, we had wow. they we we were allowed we hired a lighting technician, so we like pre-programmed all the lights to the song. Um and it was just a lot of I mean, like pre-production, it was a lot of me just having to make creative editorial choices in pre-production rather than post. So it was like I had to be super economical with how I shot it. I had to like only get what I knew I was going to use, which made the editing process a lot easier. Um, but there's certain things where, you know, we have one, two takes, like our actors are so good and they were so prepared. 
and they really got what we were going for. You know, it was very easy to give them direction because I didn't have to give that much of it. Um, but like a scene in that Escobar scene, Evan has that whole thing at the end where she's um, explaining, like, we should take over the cartel and, <laughs> <laughs> and that, that whole big, you know, monologue of hers. Uh, that's one take. Uh, we had one wow. take. And we had 20 minutes at the end of the day. We were just... And that was a day where, like, near the end of the schedule, we had to cut our days a little short. We were getting a little close to going over the budget, and it was like, we have to do 10-hour days now. <laughs> and we had, what you know, I'm like, okay, I could get maybe three takes if I'm really quick at giving notes of this performance. So she does take one. At the end of it, a little piece that we cut off was, like, when she's crying after he uh, Al exits in a cloud of cocaine <laughs> dust. <laughs> um, and she starts crying, and then she starts doing these dance moves and, like, <laughs> falls down to the ground, right? And when she gets back up, her wig had gone into the blood that Dan wiped the Escobar, <laughs> like, he wiped the medallion off, and she had blood in the wig, and it was like, well, we're, you know, this is how it's going to take 40 minutes to, like, take yeah. the wig off, clean it, dry it, put it back on and um wow it was like all right let's just dab it dry and then fall back and get one like big wide shot yeah you know so it was yeah yeah i mean appell nailed it i mean the, the crew was amazing uh, uh, everyone incredible. was just so locked in and just kind of like bought into the mission it was like a passion project it, for it, yes it top to bottom and, and also but uh, eric has been shooting that way since we started working together in 2008 he was always so fast he always knew what he wanted and so when we were having these conversations with Roku and potential buyers, and they were just like, are you sure you guys can pull it off? And I was just like, I wouldn't say we could unless Eric was directing it. And, and I think uh, those reps that we had together as a producer and as a writer director at, at Funnier Die, working with talent and shooting quickly and getting creative and like you would cheat different scenes from different, you would kind of like Frankenstein some things too, just to like make sure you had everything. And then it was also convenient in post because if someone asked like, hey, do you have this? We could have just always fall back. I'm like, well, you only gave us 18 days to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so like this is uh, everything we got. And so it was uh -huh. a really a testament to him leading that and really setting the tone for the entire set and and al too al is i mean he works so hard yeah he's so nice incredible he's, was he on set a lot he was there oh, every day every was, single day wow. yep yep from from call to rap every day um wow. you know he wouldn't really like you know he 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 would watch you know he would sit at the monitors uh, with us but he let me do my thing and wouldn't. Re I mean, we we didn't do a lot of like improv. And we, this is this is the script. Like we yeah. shot the script, um, and uh, you know Al would only really step in with notes. Usually it was like performance based accordion stuff, and um, he was generally just like psyched. He was like happy with everything. <laughs> and it, it was a real joy to just watch him watch at Video Village. Yeah. Because also so many of the the celebrity cameos are friends of his, and everyone just came out to support him. Yeah, so, that pool party scene. Yeah, was can like, you talk about the cameos? I mean, you had everyone in there. It's an amazing, and the way they're shot, it's just. Yeah, thanks. It was it was really um, it was like Al gave me his Christmas card <laughs> mailing list. You know, like, <laughs> um, so here's like everyone that I'm comfortable with just reaching out to personally. Um, you know, and then I see names on there like Conan O'Brien and Michael McKeon and, you know, Jack Black. And, uh, yeah, it was like Al, you know. We, and it, was that all just a day? Like, that was a day. That pool party was a, a, a day. Again, a shared day. It was also the scene in Dr. Demento's office where the, uh, they're, like, making out on the couch. Like, that was that same day, too. But having all that talent in there, and it was the – coldest day of the year yeah there were supposed to be people in the pool but it was like too cold even with heating the pool it was too cold to put people in there really windy really windy it was like gonna rain the sun kept coming in and out it was like maybe the most difficult day i've ever had shoot you know trying to get it done but yeah you have jack black who like does on the first take i'm like all right do we move on <laughs> i mean he just that's <laughs> He's such like he's a so savant, good. like he's such an incredible yeah. performer. He just shows up and does it. <laughs> well, um, Rain Wilson was amazing as Dr. Demento. And yes, um, yes. Really incredible. And I have to, so you had Dr. Patton in the trailer 
was Dr. Demento. Yeah, and yeah. I was happy to see that part fleshed out in the movie. It was like, yeah, I mean, he's so <laughs> critical th to the story, and it's like, I mean, I don't know what Weird Al and Dr. Demento's actual. Uh, I mean, it's not is, quite like that. <laughs> 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 Dr. Demento tried to, to adopt him. Tried to adopt him, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we really base the relationship <laughs> off, um, it's, it's Jack Horner and Dirk Diggler. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, he steps in to become the father figure yeah, and, yeah. and uh, you know, and gets burned by his star, you know, <laughs> that, you know when he uh, gets lost. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Um, but Rain was, uh, yeah, again, just so perfect for for this and totally got what we're trying to do and yeah. um yeah like the the most surprising thing when directing this was those moments those emotional beats when we were filming it and like they were working you know like like we have rain in in like a bathtub <laughs> <laughs> covered in bubbles and giving this meaningful like I saw something in you and we're watching it. It's like, oh, wow, yeah, this is really <laughs> oddly, like he's really nailing this. Um, moments when like, when when uh, Daniel and Toby Huss, who's incredible Amazing. as his father. Wow. Amazing. Um, when they're, you know, in the factory and he's like, what are you doing, dad? And his eyes are welling up, you know, that, oh, I'm not good at turning cranks now. Like, <laughs> it was just played so real and, but like his eyes are welling up with tears and Al and I are sitting behind the monitors giggling like, I can't believe someone's letting us make this movie. <laughs> this is so crazy. Wow. Yeah. Um, and um, when did uh, Roku get involved? Were they, did they buy it when you were sort of finishing up or were they involved earlier? They were involved earlier, and we were very happy to have them involved. Yeah. Uh, we, the executive there, Colin Davis, who has been a, a great champion of this movie, uh, he actually worked at Quibi, if you guys recall the, the, great, the great Quibi era. Of, I met uh, him on a Quibi. I did a Quibi. I met yeah. him on a Quibi. Yeah. Um, and so he was a real, he actually wanted it to want to buy it at Quibi, but then Quibi didn't have time to, to do it, essentially. Uh, and then we were fortunate that he went over to Roku, was still really passionate about the project, um, and we were able to collaborate, and it was just really a kind of a perfect partnership. Yeah, yeah, Roku has been, like, incredible and let us make this exactly the way we wanted to make it, and yeah. really very, very little interference on that end, and have been just, like, so incredibly supportive of the project and, and getting it out there and letting us, you know, I mean, it's going to be on the Roku channel, but they've let us do all these film festivals and, like, you know, get it out yeah. there in front of people and, and, you know, give people, like, these special theatrical experiences like this. So that's very cool. That's great. Well, thank you so much for, for being here tonight. Congrats yeah, thank on you. the film. Tell everyone to watch it. Thank and you for having thank, us. Thank you both Thanks so for coming much. out. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody.